All right, uh, going on now to section five of chapter six. Here we're dealing with some word problems and converting them into radical equations. Or oh, I, should, I should say rational equations. We'll get to radicals in chapter seven. All right, we're gonna deal with problems in dealing with work later with motion, and then later proportions. And uh, one of the main ones that we use is uh, the distance formula and work formula. And I don't quite use these, but uh, let's see if you can figure them out. Well, the formula they're using and this is a T here as well, is T over A plus T over B equals one, which stands for the whole job, while our distance formula that we've used before is distance equals rate times time. And let's give some background on this because I think it's important. How do they get this formula? Well, if Bob can get something done in three hours, the amount that he gets done in one hour is one-third. So that's his rate, one-third of the job in one hour, if it takes him three hours. Now, Pete can get the job done in five hours. So his rate is one-fifth of the job per hour. And this is equal to one out of the time it would take them to work it together. Now if I multiply everything here by t, multiply this by t, multiply this by t, multiply this by t, here the t's cancel out and I get this formula. This is the one I'm more used to doing, but these two are equivalent. And this is an old friend. Now, as I've mentioned a number of times on these videos, is that I have the problems, these worksheets, and I have the answers. But what I didn't have is the equations to get to the answers. So in order for me to do this presentation, I had to sit down with my book and write these out. So what I'm doing here is to help, hopefully, uh, you to figure these things out as well. So let's look at these equations here. It says Horace can reorganize a large filing cabinet in two hours. So his rate is going to be, he can get one half of it done if it takes him two hours. Now, Janelle can re reorganize the same cabinet in five hours. So her rate is one fifth of it per hour. How long would it take to get them working together? So it'll be one out of T. So let's just finish this one up here. So what's our common denominator? Well, and I think I like that system I introduced. In fact, I think this one looks familiar here. Uh, 10T. So this will be two goes into there. I'm going to get a 5t here. This will cancel out. 5 goes into there once, and I get a 2t there. And the t cancels out, and I get a 10 there. So I have then 7t equals 10. And I divide both sides by 7. t equals 1 
and three sevenths hours to get the job done working together. Well, that was a real easy one, but it's nice to have an easy one and to show us the technique in having it done. All right, let's read number four. It takes an inkjet ink jet printer 10 times as long to complete a print job as it takes the laser printer. Yeah, these are much faster. Together, it would take seven minutes. Well, the rate of one is one out of 10. The rate of the other is yeah, I was forgetting to put the T there. So 1 out of 10T, 1 out of T, and then 1 out of 7. So our common denominator here will be, our common denominator is 70T. So canceling this with that, I get 7. Canceling this with that, I get 70. Canceling this with that, I get 10t. So 77 equals 10t. Divide by 10, t equals 7.7. .7. That would be the laser printer doing it by itself. And then the inkjet would be this one. And of course, working these, the key is that you want to be able to set them up. So here he can paint a room in five hours. So this rate is one over five. Kim in three hours. So her rate is one in three. And together it's gonna to be one over T. So our common denominator here would be 15t. Mariah can clean the house, horse stalls at Dazzling Rides Farm in six hours. So one in six. Lindsay needs 10 hours. One in 10. Working together, one in t. So, as you can see, this is sort of a formula now. Let's see if you could pick out what the least common multiple is here. Now, you might have said 60t. That would have been okay, but the least would be 30t. And by the way, if you use 60t, it would come out the same. Okay, here we have a swimming pool that can be filled in 15 hours if water enters through a pipe alone, or in 24 hours if it enters through a hose alone. How long would it take if you fill the pool using both the pipe and the hose? So again, the basic formula, it one out of 15 is its rate per hour, one out of 24 is its rate per hour, and one out of t is the time together. So the common denominator, and I set it up this way, which is another way, I'm going to cancel out the 15 here. So this will then be 24t. I'm going to cancel out the, tw the 24 there. Oh, I have to use the 15. So this is going to be 15t. And then I cancel out the t there, and then this is 24 times 15, which will be 360. So it's going to be the sum of these, which looks like 39t equals 360 and divide both by 39. So T for number seven 
will be 9.23 hours. Okay, let's do number eight. Now, this is similar to one we did earlier, where an inkjet takes three times the time. So, one over three times the time is this rate, plus one over the regular amount of time for that one, equals one over 15. So, what will your common multiple B. Think about it. And it's 15 T. Now here three T's will cancel and you'll end up with a 5. Here the T will cancel and you end up with a 15. And then here the 15 cancels and you end up with a T. So we have here 5 plus 15 is 20, and that's what t is. It's going to take 20 minutes for it to work together, or I should say that's work by itself, and then 3 times 20 for the other one is 60 minutes. Part of it is reading it, thinking about it, thinking what model you've done that might be used, applying that, getting your equation, what's your least common denominator, get rid of fractions, and does your answer make sense once you finish? This one's a little tricky, so I'll go over it with you. When you detail a car, it means you're going to really try to make that car look new washing it, doing the tires, cleaning the inside, the windows, maybe even painting the tires with a special paint they use for that. And they're saying that someone can detail a car in this amount of time. So that would be their rate, one over that per hour. Actually, these are minutes here. And this person can do it 20 minutes less than that other person. So that's that person's rate. This guy's fast. And they can get it done together in this amount of time or that amount of fraction. But it's one over this amount of time. Now you might have trouble remembering what to do with this. So what does this mean? Well, it means one divided by this, which I put like so. And then we're gonna convert the division to multiplication, take the reciprocal of this. So this is what this is going to become. So I'm going to take that off of there and put that there. So now what would my common denominator be to get rid of all those fractions? Well, you have to multiply each term by 21t. That would be this t and that 21, and then t minus 20. And that will do it. OK, so uh, as we do this next one, again, you have to read them carefully. Here is a person that can clean an office in three hours. When this is working with someone else, they can get it done in 80 minutes. So this is the end time. How long would it take if this person worked by herself to clean the office? This is what we don't know. Now, here's the tricky part that you can't say one out of three because here they're giving something in minutes. So you have to have it all in hours or all in minutes. So what we'll do is we'll convert the three hours to minutes, which is 3 times 60, which gives us the 180. So now this is rate per minute, rate per minute, rate per minute of getting the job done. 
Now, what would your common denominator be? Well, I know it's not going to be these two. But, in a pinch, you could use these two. So watch what happens. Here, this will cancel out. And you'll get here 80t. Let's put an 80 in there. 80t. Now the t will cancel out. You get kind of a big number here. And this is going to be 14,400. And here the 80 cancels out. And you get 180t. So again, you're going to collect your t's. And I'll do this one for you. One, one, let's see, 14400 zero, zero equals. Now I'm going to transport that. That'll give me 100 T on this side. I'm going to divide both sides by 100. So I get 144 minutes. And that's how long it would take this person, Hannah, to clean it by herself. So it looked perhaps difficult. And if you have trouble finding the least common denominator, you can always use that technique. Because you want to get rid of all your denominators here. OK, uh, there's another one, but I think we've done enough of those. Number 12. Here we have a river or a creek or something that is flowing at a rate of 4 miles per hour. Now, this person, Beth, can canoe upstream against the current 6 miles in the same time she can canoe downstream 14 miles. So try to understand what's going on. She can go 6 miles up the stream against the current, 14 miles downstream with the current in the same amount of time. So what is sort of equal here? Well, we say time equals time. Well, in our distance formula, we see distance equals rate times time. Well, what does time equal? Well, we're going to divide both sides by r. And we get time equals distance divided by rate. So we're going to have distance divided by rate equals distance divided by rate because these are times. And all the information is there. So this distance is 6 miles. And we don't know her rate, but we know that she's going against the current that is 4 miles. And when she goes downstream, she's going to go 14 miles. And she's going to go rate which we don't know, plus 4. So those are our two uh, sides. And time equals time. So we're just going to cross multiply here. We showed you that technique already. So when I cross multiply, I get 6r plus 24 equals 14r minus 56. I want to keep my r's positive, so I'm going to transpose this. I get 8r. Transpose this, I get 80. Divide both sides by 8. I get r equals 10. So what is that? The speed of Beth's canoe in still water. And it checks out. Now in these, it's very, very similar. It's time equals time. And the same here. Time equals time. Which we said was distance divided by rate. Distance divided by rate. And here's our distance. That's the rate. There's the distance. It's a slower rate. 
cross multiply and you'll get the answer. Now this is similar to one we've already done except now we don't know the speed of the current. We know the rate of the boat. So again the same. Distance divided by rate again with the current. Less distance divided by rate against the current. You're going to cross multiply. We're up to 20 minutes already and I don't want to keep make these too long. But hopefully you're picking up on what we're doing. Now for here we're dealing with similar triangles. And what we do we want to find similar sides and set up proportion. Here we have 3 is to 10. 3 is to 10 as x is to 8. We're just going to cross multiply and solve for x. Here we have again 18 is to 24 as p is to 18. Just cross multiply, solve for p. Now at looking at plans, if this is 2.8 inches to 14 feet, 2.8 to 14 feet, F is inches to how many feet? There's your proportion. Just cross multiply. The key to setting up proportions is that they are something is to something in a proportional way. So you have 72 pages in 12 days. So it's pages to days. Then how many pages in 16 days? Just cross multiply, solve for P. You have 48 memory cards with three defective. So memory cards to defective. You have this many memory cards to defective. So the proportion is set up in that way. You can't switch these around. It has to be cards to defective. Cards to defective. Cards to defective. Just cross multiply. Okay, uh, we've done enough, I think, and uh, Later, you know, you'll uh, see if you can do some practice as you do your homework, and hopefully this gave you a handle on it.